महादेव Hi friends, let's begin history of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj part 2. To better understand the history of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, it becomes essential to understand the brief history of India and its rulers. First of all, we need to understand the various Sultans who ruled this country and how Sri Krishna Devaraya's Vijayanagar Empire was established and how it fell. The entire Konkan region of Maharashtra is covered by Sahyadri mountain ranges on one side. The Dandakaranyam is sanctified by Sri Sita Rama Lakshman's feet. Ashrams were established in the Dandakaranyam where Sri Ramaswami wandered. These ashrams were gradually transformed into villages. The most fertile lands of agriculture flourished into prosperous towns. The kings of Yadava clan established their kingdom in this Dandakaranya and they ruled the kingdom happily with Devagiri as its capital. Around 720 AD, the Mohammedans first entered India from Persia and established a small kingdom. Around 1206, Kutubuddin Aibak, a Mohammedan from Turkey belonging to a Mamluk descent, established the first sultanate in Delhi. This Mamluk dynasty continued to rule until 1290. Around 1280, Jalaluddin Kilji started as a petty officer in Mamulik Kingdom and within a short period of time rose to a high rank in the army. At that time, the king had a stroke and became bedridden. The ministers immediately crowned the young prince as the king of the kingdom. These ministers were always in dispute with Jalaluddin Kilji. They misrepresented him to the new king and hired assassins to kill him. Jalaluddin Kilji, who learned about this in advance, assassinated king and the ministers and established the Kilji kingdom in 1290. Jalaluddin Kilji gave his daughter in marriage to his nephew Allahuddin Kilji, whom he brought up from childhood. Jalaluddin Kilji appointed Allahuddin Kilji as the general of Khanpur area. Allahuddin Kilji's focus shifted towards the most opulent Devagiri kingdom. He decided to loot the Devagiri kingdom. At that time, Raja Ramdevra ruled Devagiri. This region, which has not seen any wars for hundreds of years, has been used by the kings for worship and rewards. Keeping the military force ready for the war and setting up a speed messaging system were completely ignored. Yuvraj Shankar Dev Acting as the commander of the army, went on a pilgrimage with the army of 30,000 horsemen. Knowing this through spies, thinking that this was a good time, Kilji rode with 8,000 horse riders and set up to plunder Devagiri kingdom. Kilji's army is very small when compared to Devagiri army. Devagiri army is more than 30,000, but the kingdom administration is poorly coordinated and focused mainly on worship and pilgrimage than on the kingdom's security. This mistake paved the path for the invasion of future Mohammedan kings into India. Due to the lack of the speed messaging system, Devagiri king had no clue of Kilji's attack until Kilji was within 100 kilometers of the capital. Having known about the Kilji's attack at the last minute, the king of Devagiri Having left with no option, attacked Kilji with the remaining 4,000 men and fought two kilometers outside the capital. Even though Devagiri soldiers fought with pounding valor, Devagiri army lost heavily to the gruesome Kilji army. 
Many Devagiri soldiers perished in the war. Immediately the king moved everyone into the fort and closed the fort gates. Kilji was ravaged. He had no machinery or equipment to break the fort walls. Besides, Kilji knew that he had no time. And if the prince returned with his army from the pilgrimage, he would be out of luck. So Kilji exhibiting false valor sent a message that we are not the main army. We are the scout which had come to investigate. The main army with massive forces is coming behind from Delhi. To reduce the slaughter of your kingdom, negotiate with us for your own good and make peace treaty. If it is not accepted, we are not concerned with your loss of life. The king of Devagiri decided to wait for the Yuvraj to arrive. And just at that time, the king received a news that the traders have mistakenly filled the storehouse with bags of salt instead of food grains that were supposed to be stored in the fort. The king did not understand what to do with the army or with the food grains. So Raja Ramdev Rao immediately accepted defeat and agreed to give huge amount of donation to Kilji and make truce. At that time, king received a message that Yoraj has reached the outskirts of the country with his army. Ramdev Rao immediately sent a message to his son. I have already made peace with Kilji and you should not fight with them because a large army is coming from Delhi to protect them. But the prince decided to face the Kilji. Kilji came to know through the spies that Yuvraj was coming. Kilji concluded that death or victory should be decided. But Kilji is like a cunning fox. He left a thousand warriors in his army behind and with the rest of the army went into war against Yuvraj. The war was raging. The vastly larger Devagiri army was crushing Kilji's army. At that time, when defeat was inevitable, a thousand men left behind Kilji rushed to the battlefield on their horses. Seeing the dust rising with all the running horses, Devagiri's army assumed that a large army was coming from Delhi and they lost courage and fled away. Yuvraj also ran away. Victory went to Kilji. Allahuddin Kilji came back to besiege the fort. He agreed on what they would have to offer to save the kingdom. In those days, measurements were made in the form of pots. One pot had a weight of 18 kgs. According to the agreement, the kingdom of Devagiri has given Kilji 600 pots of gold, 7 pots of pearls, 2 pots of diamonds, a thousand pots of silver, and 4 tons of silk were presented. Apart from this, Kilji being an omanizer, married Ramdev Rao's daughter and took her with him. As if this was not enough, the Devagiri kingdom also had to bear the travel expense of Kilji from Delhi to back. Also, every year the kingdom of Devagiri had to pay a tribute to Sultan of Delhi. This Kilji later attacked the fort of Chittur and this incident will be discussed in the next part. After some period of time, Raja Ramdev Rao sent a message to Kilji that his son is not agreeing to pay the tax. Immediately, Kilji called his general Malik Kafur and ordered him to defeat the Devagiri army at war and arrest the king and throw him into the prison. There was a fierce battle between Malik Kafur and Yuvraj. Malik defeated Yuvraj Shankar Dev in that battle. He looted the entire treasury of Devagiri kingdom, arrested Raja Ram Dev Rai, imprisoned him and reached Delhi with those treasures. Kilji kept Raja Ram Dev Rao in prison for six months and finally sent him to Devagiri after agreeing to pay the tax every year. Yuvraj Shankar Dev was burdened with shame. At that time, Kilji's army also occupied Warangal, the capital of Andhra Pradesh. Raja Ramdev Rao died in 1309 and Shankar Dev became the king. He started to rebel against Kilji and stopped paying taxes. In anger, Kilji ordered Malik not to spare Devagiri anymore, brutally eliminate the Devagiri army, chop the soldiers into small pieces, merge the kingdom of Devagiri into our kingdom and build a Jamma Masjid there 
and take care of the administration of that kingdom. Malik and Shankar Dev fought back, and in this battle, Malik cut off Shankar Dev's head and he ended the war. Some time later, Alauddin Khilji was on deathbed due to liver problems. At that time, Malik Kafur was called to Delhi. Malik Kafur left his forces in Maharashtra and reached Delhi. Thinking this was a good time, Harpal Dev, the son-in-law of Raja Ram Dev Rao, attacked the Malik army and defeated them in battle. He captured Devagiri. Alauddin Khilji died in Delhi on 19th December 1316 due to health issues. Khilji's sons were blinded by a demonic plot to take over the kingdom. The daughter of Devagiri king, Raja Ram Dev Rao, who became Khilji's wife, and Khilji's six-year-old son, Shahabuddin, was also killed. Even Khilji's most trusted pawn, Malik Kafur, was killed. Kutubuddin Mubarak Khan Khilji has taken over the Sultan of Delhi. He decided to settle the Devagiri issue himself, and in 1318, went into battle with Devagiri army. In the battle with Devagiri, the Sultan showed his monstrous quality by capturing Harpal Dev, the son-in-law of Raja Ram Dev Rao, tying him to the gate of Devagiri fort and ordered him to be skinned alive. Even in Maharashtra, as well as in the Deccan region, the saints and pandits were killed as a reward. Mubarak Khan Khilji ruled till 1320. Delhi was ruled by the Tughlaq Sultans from 1320 to 1347. Nazirudin Ismail Shah, who served as a commander and governor of the Deccan region under the Tughlaq Sultan, retired on August 3, 1347, and was replaced by Bahman Shah. This Bahman Shah rebelled against the Delhi Sultan and established his independent kingdom with Hasanbad as capital. This kingdom is Bahmani Sultan. Bahman Shah was succeeded by his son Muhammad Shah. Muhammad Shah is a monster of cruelty. Once he caught the king of Telangana, Vinayak Dev in war and cut his throat. Then he threw him alive from the top of Ellingapatnam fort into the fire below. He takes demonic pleasure in killing people. He killed 70,000 people in Adhoni region. Historians say that later in his ruling, he advocated on massacre of uncountable number of lakhs of people in the outskirts of Karnataka. He vandalized every temple in sight. All the Bahmin sultans who came after him became addicted to women and alcohol. One of the Bahmani sultan brought beautiful girls from all over the country and married them all. Thus, the sultan married thousands of women and built a huge mansion to live luxuriously with always quenched in liquor. The last of this Bahmani sultan was Sultan Ahmad Shah Bahmani II, who came into rule as a sultan in 1482. He did not follow the state administration and spent his life in alcohol addiction. The administration of the kingdom was overseen by five commanders. In 1518, these five commanders declared themselves independent kings. The kingdom was divided into five kingdoms, namely Allahabad Nizam Shahi Sultan, Bidar Sultan, Berar Sultan, Adil Shahi Sultan in Bijapur, and Kutub Shahi Sultan in Golconda. Singaraya Naik III. who was serving as a commander under the Delhi Sultan in the Deccan Hoysala region declared independence from the Delhi Sultan and established the Hoysala Kingdom in the Hoysala Kingdom there were two commanders namely Harhara and Bukkaraya there are claims that both of them are from Telugu or Karnataka Harhara and Bukkaraya together established the Vijayanagara Empire in 1336 After the establishment of Vijayanagara Empire, Harhara annexed the entire region south of Tungabhadra River into his kingdom. After Harhara, in 1374, Bukkaraya took over the security of the kingdom. He defeated the Arakot country, Pondavidu kingdom, Madurai Sultan, and captured Goa. Also, the capital was shifted from Anikondi to Vijayanagara. Due to the shift of the capital. It became easy to protect the kingdom 
and to attack the North Indian country. During the reign of Devaraya II, the Vijayanagara Empire expanded into Burma and Sri Lanka kingdoms. The Vijayanagara Empire gradually declined due to the wars with the Bahmani sultans. Eventually, in 1460, Virupaksha Raya II, a king who ruled poorly, lost much of his kingdom to the Bahmani sultans. He devoted much of his life to luxuries. During his reign, rebellions in Vijayanagara Empire grew into intolerance. After the death of Virupaksha Raya, Saluva Narsimha, the commander of Vijayanagara, rebelled and took over the kingdom. During his reign, he fought war against the Bahmani sultans and captured many kingdoms. Narsimha died and left his two young sons under the guardianship of his general, Narsanna Nayaka. This Narsanna Nayaka effectively defended the kingdom from enemy attacks and protected the prince from rebels. In 1503, Nayak's son Veera Narsimha assassinated the prince and ascended the throne of Vijayanagara kingdom. Even though he was the king, there were more rebellions in the country as well as attacks from the Bahmani sultans and Vijayanagar started to fall. Realizing that the situation was getting worse, Sri Krishna Devaraya, the second son of Nayak, ascended the throne in 1509. His reign is said to be the golden age in the history of Vijayanagara. He crushed the rebellions and led the Vijayanagar forward in all fields. During his time, he fought bravely and defeated the Sultan of Bijapur. Sri Krishna Devaraya captured Raichur and Gulbarga. During his reign, the Vijayanagara Empire extended to Orissa. After the death of Sri Krishna Devaraya in 1529, his younger brother Achyut Devaraya became the king. In 1542, Achyut Devaraya in his last days declared his nephew as the king and placed the administration of the kingdom in the hands of Aliya Ramaraya, son-in-law of Sri Krishna Devaraya. Aliya Ramaraya captured the young king and declared himself as the king. He enlisted a large number of Muslim warriors into his army and marched across the lands of five sultans. The five sultans who became vexed with Ramaraya finally decided to control Vijayanagara kingdom. The five sultans declared war on Ramaraya. The battle between these armies took place in Talikota. We have read this battle in history as the Battle of Talikota. Sultan's 5 lakh army faced Ramaraya's 10 lakh army. Although the Sultan's had most modern weapons, Ramaraya's army gained the upper hand in the battle. Just when Ramaraya thought that he would win the war, his two Muslim commanders betrayed him and captured Ramaraya and handed him over to the Sultan's. Bijapur Sultan with his sword chopped Ramaraya's head. Ramaraya's head was tied to a stick and paraded around the town. The Vijayanagara army, looking at the condition of their king, lost courage and scattered. Thus the battle of Talikota was lost by the Vijayanagara kingdom. In 1574, the Berar Sultan was conquered by the Nijam Shahi Sultan of Ahmedabad. Also, in 1619, Bidar Sultan was occupied by Bijapur Sultan. Thus in the Deccan, at the beginning of the 16th century, only three sultans remained instead of the five sultans. The Nijam Shahi of Ahmedabad, Adil Shahi Sultan of Bijapur and Kutub Shahi Sultan of Golconda remained. North India was under the rule of the Mughal Empire. At this time, you will understand what happens to these sultans with the accession of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj's father, Shahaji Maharaj. We will start to explore the history of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, ensuring a deep understanding of each Sardar involved. Bye friends.